We're spawning on King Sejong Station, ladies and gentlemen. The previous game lasted 1 hour and 26 seconds between these two guys who are fighting for third place in the Nordics. And we have spawning in the top left position as the Blue Zerg player. Ladies and gentlemen, representing Team Swarm Host, it's sort of. And with the incredible air toss transition that looked like it was winning and then losing and then winning and then losing and then winning again at various points throughout the game, but managing to come out in the end. Representing Cartage Esports, it's Ike. Oh man. This is going to be absolutely... Well, it, it a game like Game 2 does change your mindset for the rest of the series because you're thinking maybe it'll take an hour for the series. If it takes an hour just for one game, you're ending up in a situation where you're just so, so tired. And uh, you might get shorter games in the rest of the series. Different, uh, you, you get into a mindset where sort of different strategies start taking hold. And you stop playing. Uh, you stop playing necessarily the super long games. This might happen. I don't know. We haven't got a forge this time from Ike. Both games one and two have started with a forge into a cannon rush. So uh, Swordob's going to be aware of that, and he's already got a drone here. Um, are we are we going three hatch before pool? Because that cannon rush would have been perfect in this situation. The probe scouts coming into the natural expansion now. Is he really going to put that? Yes, he puts down the hatchery. It's three hatch before pool versus Nexus first. And Ike, he's not even going to try, he's not even going to pretend that this is a cannon rush right now. He hasn't put down a pylon. Um, so these guys are like, look, if we're going into a macro game, can you do us a favor and just get to as many bases as possible quickly? <laughs> can we please just split the map at the beginning? Oh, that's hilarious. Guys, in the meantime, uh, if you've been on social media, uh, make sure you go ahead and follow Norcraft Cup on Twitter. And enter the competition to win gaming headsets and mice uh, on facebook.com slash Norcraft Cup. Uh, you still have the opportunity to do it because you have until the final start. So until this best of five finishes. Um, so make sure you do that. Also go ahead and follow me on Twitter. I'm at twitter.com slash Jorisar. Tweet me what your uh, what your predictions are for this series and for the final. And also don't forget to tweet me your thoughts on the stream in this tournament so far as well. It's been a... Uh, an incredible ride to say the least and uh, the games haven't been getting any worse they've just been really entertaining so I'm looking forward to the finals as well I'm also on Facebook of course at facebook.com slash Jarosar so uh, you'll get a uh, lovely little Facebook notification when I go live with an event or when I post stuff to YouTube so if you want to be kept abreast with that feel free to follow me there and well I mean, this game, <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised to see, like, some sort of early timing attack from either of these players after that game, too. Um, we are in a situation where the winner of this game goes on to match point. All best of threes before, we now are in a best of five situation. Probes being chrono boosted, lots of uh, drones being made as well. We're up to 32 workers versus 28, and this is the 5 minute 40 mark. So, uh, just heavy, heavy macroing up initially. And, uh, yeah, nothing uh, nothing too much so far in terms of tech choice, aside from the Stargate from Ike here on King Sejong Station. So, uh, smart money would be on that Phoenix opening that we've seen before. Is he going to mix it up after that last game and try and do some early damage with Oracles? I don't know. I mean, they could hit and do damage a lot faster uh, than waiting for three or four Phoenixes to pop out, for example. But uh, it's only now that the wall off is starting to complete and two Lings actually get in as well. Are they going to be able to kill this sentry? I think with the help of the probe as well, the answer is no. But uh, very brave not to use a force field there. The Zealot's coming back going, what did I miss? Is everything okay? Sentry's like, yeah, don't worry about it. Everything is fine. And it is going to be an oracle. All right. Uh, does this guy see it? I think he does. Yeah, he knows it's an oracle this time, so it's not going to be a phoenix. And uh, let's see how the preparations are. We've got the uh, four crawlers going down. We've got one in the natural expansion. Nothing in the main base yet. Nothing in the third base yet. 
Uh, it was three hatch before pool, remember. The Oracle's coming out now. This Overlord will see it swim on by, but I don't think sort of actually clicked that, interestingly. And he's actually going straight in, I think, to the one base where there is a Spore Crawler. Nope. Okay. He's going... Yeah, he's going into the natural expansion where the Spore Crawler is already complete. And that buys sort of enough time to have the Spores complete in his other bases as well. So this Oracle is not going to do too much, I believe. Oh, not even able to get one kill there, I don't think. Uh, unfortunately, targeting the drone that was queued up to make that extractor... And dear, oh dear, not the greatest of openings from Ike here. Wanted to do a lot more damage with that. He is, however, transitioning into a very, very quick robotics bay. So we are going to see, uh, are going to see Colossi as a follow-up. The actual army composition he's aiming for in the end game has not changed. Uh, I guess we'll go into Sky Toss if necessary, but we're going to be seeing some Voiders. We're going to be seeing those Colossi. And uh, sort of, in the meantime, got the Evo Chambers coming up. He's feeling pretty comfortable at the moment. He's up to 73 drones. So, uh, not in a position where he's feeling particularly threatened. These oracles haven't done very much, and sort of is in a comfortable position here. He's just starting his Spire now. And uh, nice little positioning there, actually. If an oracle comes in and tries to harass the mineral line and moves away, or goes all the way around to harass the main base, mm, it's going to take a little bit of extra effort to scout that Spire. So, uh, still a lot of thought being put into the Sim City here for both players. Whew. And there's the extended thermal lance coming up from the robotics bay. So, uh, this is looking pretty similar. The Twilight Council coming in uh, a little bit later than normal, I'm going to say, because this plus one is going to finish much sooner than the Twilight Council is going to complete, unless he stops Chrono Boost again entirely, and even then I think it finishes very slightly before. Um, so where is he going to be using his Chrono Boost? Let's take a look. He doesn't... Uh, oh, he actually has full energy. There we go. Ah, okay, he's actually using it on the Colossi himself. And there's the plus one complete. The Twilight Council, a little bit mistimed. But that's fine. Are we going to start the blink first and chrono that? Or are we chronoing plus two? We'll keep an eye out. Uh, Twilight Council now complete. We have the Void Ray production starting now as well. So uh, that's where his gas is going to be used. He's still got 400. And uh, we are actually going to be transitioning earlier on into Mutas this game. 13 of them coming out right now. This Oracle still trying to make himself as worthwhile as possible. Six kills to his name. Killing off four workers. But... Fourth base coming up, fifth base coming up, sort of is starting to expand throughout the map. He's feeling a lot more confident now, and it is going to be the plus two and the blink. Neither of them being chrono boosted so far. We're actually using a... Where is the chrono being used? Let me see if I can spot it. It's not the, ro it's not the robo. It's not the blink. It's not the forge. Where are we going on? It doesn't matter at the moment because the Mutas are going to be coming and trying to harass as much as possible. Are they going to take apart, actually, a Colossus here? Uh, they're going to try, and no, it doesn't look like it. A couple of them actually falling straight out of the sky, so that's not great. We need to get the Mutalists to a number where, basically, Stalkers have to respect them. Uh, a number of workers have gone down, though, so it's down to 62 pros versus 84 uh, drones, which is great. The Mutas are going to be able to provide a lot of mobility across this map. And uh, means that Ike can't really safely move out of his base. So just picking that cannon off, uh, you obviously can't put that cannon back down without killing one of these pylons because they were trapped in there. And leaving this third base open to future harassment as well. So that was kind of the idea behind that. He's not actually trying to kill too much now. He's just removing the static defense so that later on if he wants to come in he can. A lot of Lings and Roach is actually being uh, popping out now as well. Plus one Flyer Attacks is about to complete, and we've got five Corruptors in addition to Mutalist coming out. So uh, we actually have an Air Zerg of sorts coming out this time around. And he's just constantly poking in, uh, trying to harass where possible, keeping out of range of those Phoenixes, forcing the Photon Overcharge, and saying to Aiki, Look, mate, you're definitely not coming out and attacking me anytime soon. And uh, to be honest, he's right. Uh, with these Mutals on the map, it's extremely difficult. And we've also got a Corruptor or two now to kind of force the Phoenixes to think about what they're doing in terms of kiting away. Just slowly picking a couple of things apart. Ooh, getting a Phoenix there as well. That's pretty nice. And the Muta numbers continue to grow. We're up to 23 Mutalists and 7 Corruptors now. And we have 9 more Corruptors. 
uh, in a production. Is he going to go in here and try and take on this army? It looks like it. The Void Ray being targeted down so that the Corruptors don't get killed off too quickly, but the rest of the army coming back with the Phoenixes with a couple more Stalkers, and that could be problematic. Nice pick off there on the Mothership Core. We have the Lynx coming in on the ground, but he can't really face off against these Stalkers at the moment while so many Colossi are alive. So just continuing to be very active on the map, sort of being as troublesome as possible to the Protoss player in this game number three. They're at the 15 minute mark now and he's basically owning the natural expansion. <gasps> Picking off a couple of the Stalkers is huge right now because he needs that Stalker Ball to be able to deal with the Mutalisk. Without that, it's going to be really tricky. These Stalkers are all the way over here because these Lings have basically baited them out. Okay, the Colossi and Void Rays will stay alive for now, but so far... Uh, these mutalists are doing a great job. The stalker's coming back though, and I'm, I'm not sure I like the trade. I really don't like the trade because the mutas in small numbers just aren't going to do very much at all. Um, I want to be able to keep the mutas on the field in such a way that you can do just 25 muta run by or something where you have to be careful with the stalkers. As it stands, there are only 11 mutas left on the map, and that's the kind of uh, number where you're actually just going to be able to blink underneath them. They're very close to spotting, though. This army, and he needs to stealth mode it by. Okay, because that's, uh, these Colossi and these Void Rays are definitely toast if the Zerg Air Army catches wind of them. So we're two Phoenixes at a time being produced now. It looks like we're going to have an air-on-air -air battle later on in this game. The Colossi and the Void Rays safely make it home, and, uh... Once again, the Air Army is just taking on the army of the Protoss here, constantly trying to trade. It's almost like he's playing this against, uh... It's almost like a TVT anti-mech, where you're constantly just trying to trade as much of the army as possible. And it looks like it's going to be enough in this case. GG is being called now from Aiki. Sort of air transition for Zerg. Just whittling away at the army non-stop, not allowing Aiki to get up to the unit composition he favors so much so far in this series. And after just 17 minutes, Sortov is going to win game 3 and go 2-1 up in this best of 5.